When I first set out to become a software engineer in the spring of 2017, I was broke and very nearly dead, literally. Now, being more than six years into my career, working for one of the largest travel tech companies in the world, making more than $200,000 a year, I really couldn't have imagined how much my life has changed. I don't have a college degree of any kind, and I may be smarter than the average bear, but I'm not special. And over the course of this video, I'm going to share with you the exact path that I took to get my first job as a developer. We'll talk a little bit about the self-taught path versus the bootcamp path and why ultimately after trying both, I opted to go the bootcamp route. In addition, I've done some digging into the outcome reports from the bootcamp that I attended so that I could get some data for you around average time to hire, average salary, average job satisfaction, all for your first job coming out of a bootcamp. Finally, I'm gonna let you in on the three things that I wish I would have known at the beginning of my career as a junior developer that have taken me from my first job at a small alternative energy company, all the way to a senior engineer working for one of the largest travel tech companies in the entire world. When I first got out of the hospital and was setting down the path of becoming an engineer, I opted to go the self-taught route. I really didn't have any concept of what I should be learning or even how to learn it, but I had taken a survey in high school, one of those jobs that you might be good at or you might think is interesting kind of surveys, and I was just kind of scrolling through the list, looking for things that seemed interesting when I saw a software engineer. I started out by taking a semester of online classes at ASU, trying to get a degree in computer science, and much like my first time around at university, it didn't really stick. I hated Java, and I still do, sorry. And I found the degree really lacked any sort of practical application building skills. Frankly, it started to feel like a little bit of a waste of my time. But even then, there was something about programming I really, really enjoyed, and I wasn't ready to give up yet. Fortunately, I did have a couple of friends who had gone down the boot camp route or gone down the CS degree route, and I asked them for some resources and some recommendations they had for how I could go about learning. They recommended I look into taking courses on Udacity or Udemy, as well as acquiring a couple of books, namely the Head First series, which I've linked in the description. So I did just that. I leveraged their advice and I leveraged the people around me and I began my journey of becoming a self-taught engineer. In those early days, I really did lean on those people who had given me that advice time and time again and I continued to through the entirety of my time learning. And that taught me the first of the three things that I wish I had known at the beginning of my career. It is so much more about who you know than what you know. Now, hear me out. This probably doesn't apply if you're trying to work in one of the FANG companies or one of the really technical areas of software engineering. But I've gotten four jobs now purely off of recommendations from former coworkers or friends because of the relationship I had cultivated with them and because I had proven my ability to dive into the deep end and understand things and work really hard. And for all four of these jobs, I actually got to skip really difficult technical interviews because of the relationship that I had cultivated with these people. This taught me that the relationships you build with people will speak far more to your abilities and your capacity than your plain technical chops by themselves ever could. Beyond being incredibly useful avenues for procuring your first or your next job, these are also the kinds of people that you can lean on when you're a beginner and you don't understand how to debug your, frankly, bad code, or you're stuck on a leak code problem that you just can't wrap your head around, or when inevitably the job rejection letters start rolling in, you have people that you can reach out to and have a shoulder to cry on who've been there and who understand it. I can't emphasize building your relationships enough at any point in your career, but especially at the beginning. The first course I attempted to learn through was an intro to web development and using Python and Django on Udacity. Now, this was six, seven years ago, I wasn't able to find that exact course anymore, but the intermediate Python learning course that they have seems to be the closest fit now. Regardless of which course you choose, make sure that you choose something that teaches you how to actually build an application. Learning to code for me was really only enjoyable once the lines I had written were translated into something I could see happening on the screen. Theory and computer science are incredibly useful and I would recommend spending some time getting to know them a little bit, but for me, nothing encouraged me to learn more and learn faster than actually building something. If I were to go the self-taught route today, I can't say that I would choose Python. Now Python is incredibly powerful for data science applications and machine learning algorithms and things of this nature, but for me, at the beginning and even still now, there's nothing nearly as satisfying as web development. There's something really, really cool as someone who was never very good at using his hands to make things that was never particularly handy about writing lines of code and then seeing something beautiful pop up on the screen that people can actually interact with. 
that was really special at the beginning of my career and frankly it's really special now. For all of those reasons I think now I would likely choose the front end curriculum that they offer on Udacity. And that brings me to my second point that I wish I would have known at the beginning of my career and that is specialize early and you can generalize later. I think it's critical to specialize more a little bit earlier in your career, simply because there's so much to learn in software. And if you try to dive in all over the place, you end up with this experience of knowing a little bit about a lot of things, but not really being capable or dangerous enough in any one particular area. I got my first job purely because of how well I understood React and front-end development. At the time, I couldn't have told you the first thing about how a database worked or how API calls worked. I just didn't know. But I could explain the ins and outs of every lifecycle method, of things like how to manage re-renders, of the goals of React Fiber, and how the virtual DOM worked. As you progress further into your career, you're gonna start hearing the term T-shaped developer a lot. Now, if you picture a T, what this means is that in one area, you can go super deep you know a ton, you're really well versed. And then in lots of other areas, this top part, you know enough, you're dangerous, you can jump into something like Kubernetes or Docker, or even some API calls, some basic database management. You can jump in and you can manage on all those things, but you're really good at one thing. As a senior engineer now, T-shaped developers are by far my favorite to work with. And the only way to become one is to dive really deep in one area when you first get started. One thing I didn't realize about programming when I first got started was actually how interconnected everything is. Learning all about the front end, while it doesn't actually teach you anything about databases or APIs directly, it does teach you a lot of really useful heuristics for how you go about approaching problem solving and developing code as a whole. As you acquire a high degree of proficiency in one area, it will inevitably translate into the next area that you try to tackle as a developer. And I think you're gonna have a much easier time acquiring a wider skill base, having a really solid foundation in one area. Ultimately, I chose to attend a boot camp for one simple reason. I wasn't learning enough fast enough. I knew at this point that I really enjoyed software. I knew I wanted to make a career out of it and I knew I just wasn't gonna get there on the timeline that I wanted to get there working by myself. Revisiting that first point of it really is who you know, I had a good friend who had attended a boot camp here in Denver, which is ultimately the one I ended up going to. I wouldn't have even known it had existed if not for him. And he actually mentored me through the entirety of the program. The boot camp that I attended Turing School of Software and Design located here in Denver, Colorado, although they do now offer fully remote options, thanks COVID, offers two tracks, front end or back end. While there is a little bit of overlap between each side of the stack as you progress deeper into the boot camp, for the entirety of your seven months at Turing, you'll primarily focus in one of these two areas, and I firmly believe that to be the reason for my success in my early career. Ultimately, I chose the front end path for a few reasons. First, I actually felt like my brain was more naturally inclined to pick up the principles and ideas of the back end, and so I thought that that was something I could probably pick up a little bit later if I decided that I needed to. Second, and more importantly, the front end just piqued my interest more. Like I mentioned earlier, I really do still love building beautiful UIs, managing application state, handling things like client-side caching, and optimizing for render performance. Whatever route that you choose to go, just make sure you focus on learning the thing that you want to learn. Don't become a data scientist or specialize in machine learning and AI just because it's what you think you should learn. If that's not interesting to you, it doesn't matter how much that's where the industry is trending, you're not gonna enjoy it. And that's the key to having happiness contentedness and longevity in any career. Turing is significantly longer than most boot camps. At seven months split into four different modules, it's a far cry away from a lot of the things you see advertised today, like become a developer quick, and these courses tend to be 10 to 12 weeks at the most. I would recommend choosing to attend the longest and most intensive boot camp that you can find. While I understand that things like tuition, your ability to work while you're in the program, which at a place like Turing you really can't do, you'll fail out all but guaranteed. And just general lifestyle factors can all impact the kind of boot camp and the duration that you can attend for. This is your career. This is your life. Don't cut corners. All in all, I would say that you should reasonably expect to spend about eight to 12 months learning everything that you need to know to become a junior developer and also go through the job hunting process, especially in today's economy. You're probably looking closer to that 12, maybe even 14 month mark. You'll see people saying they did it in less time and I have no doubts that they did, but probably did it in less time back when self-taught developers and boot camps weren't nearly as common. Now the market is saturated with junior developers and it's really important that you cultivate a skill set and relationships that allow you to stand out, especially in your early career. And I really just don't think you can do that in a shorter duration boot camp or even the self-taught route unless you're extremely dedicated.
an inevitable portion of getting hired as a junior developer or a developer at any point in your career is the technical interview. Or is it? That brings me to my third and final thing that I wish I had known on my journey to become an engineer. Unless you want to work in FANG, unless you want to work in AI and machine learning, unless you want to be in one of these specialized rare roles, you don't need to know very much computer science. You don't need to be able to crack the coding interview. You don't need to understand complex algorithms or binary search trees. I'm sure somebody's going to put me on blast for this and feel free, but I've had six jobs now as an engineer. I've been promoted at almost every single company I've worked for. I've been a senior engineer for three years now, and I have never once had to pass a complex technical interview. Even for my most senior roles, even for working for extremely technical companies like Gatsby JS, this just wasn't something I ran into. And honestly, if you ask me to do a binary search tree right now, if you ask me to do a complex like heap sort algorithm right now, I couldn't do it. Now I could learn how to if I needed to, but right now, no shot. If you do want to work in one of those more specialized areas of the industry, or if you do want to work for one of those high-end companies in that FANG umbrella, make no mistake, you will need to know this inside and out. But if you don't, or if you're okay with climbing that mountain a little bit later into your career, I actually wouldn't recommend spending that much time on these principles early on. I think there is something much more important to be good at than being able to just rattle off about algorithms. You need to be able to collaborate. I've aced every single coding interview I've ever been given because I don't just flounder around when you give me a whiteboard problem. My first interview was actually literally on a legal pad with two senior engineers looking directly over my shoulder. I ask questions. I'm deeply engaged. I seek to gain participation from the person interviewing me, talk through my strategy, talk through what I'm thinking about, and ask them to collaborate with me. Now, this might sound like a little bit of backwards advice. Maybe you feel like you have to prove that you're some sort of coding wizard when you're in a job interview. And in my experience, this just isn't true. The whole point of a coding interview is so that people can understand the way that you think so they can understand the way that you problem solve. Even if somebody gave me a technical challenge that I didn't know the answer to, if I don't know something, I'm vulnerable and say, I actually don't know how to do that off the top of my head. But here's how I think I would go about trying to find out the answer to that. And here's how I would problem solve my way through it, even if I didn't have access to the optimal solution offhand. I work with my job interviewers. I don't let them scare me. I firmly believe, and my career has shown me this to be true, if I can prove that I'm a good enough teammate to work with, that will go much further than just being able to prattle off and ace every single question. Again, I've gotten an offer for every single company I've ever had a technical interview at, and that's probably close to 10 or 12 now. And I've never had to use an algorithm to get there. It's just not what's most important, and that is a hill I'm willing to die on. Just how long you're in the job search for is going to depend on a number of different factors. The economic conditions, your prior experience separate from programming before you went to a boot camp or taught yourself, your interviewing skills, both soft and more hard technical ones, and your relationships. The Job Outcomes Report from Turing, which is released every quarter, placed the median time to hire at 119 days for the last quarter of 2023. This is not a small amount of time to be in the job hunt, especially not after you just spent seven months in a boot camp. This is actually significantly different from when I attended boot camp in 2017 to 2018. Back then, the median time to hire was actually only 69 days. For reference though, and I do think this is interesting, the median time to hire for every single quarter that Turing has released data for is 70.86 days. If you filter out the quarters that were significantly impacted by things like the fear of recession last year or COVID, that number actually drops to 60.11 days on average. Well, actually the median to be in the job search. Note that the average time to hire actually differs a little bit from the median time to hire. The average time to hire out of Turing over all quarters is 94.68 days. Beyond the job hunt duration, there are a couple of other interesting statistics to be aware of. In Q3 of 2023, the average salary of a student hired fresh out of Turing was $75,500. And their job hunt satisfaction for the process of actually getting their first job was a 4.4 out of 5. Over the 22 available quarters of data, the average salary was $78,095 and the average job hunt satisfaction was 4.11 out of 5. If you ask me, those are pretty dang solid numbers. It's also worth noting that despite dramatically shifting economic conditions over the course of the last three to four years, that the average job hunt satisfaction, even during the toughest quarters, really didn't go down that much. The lowest number that Turing ever reported was 3.93 out of 5. 
the highest average salary for any quarter was a little bit over $89,000 and the lowest was $72,000. The average nationwide salary in America as of 2023 is $59,428. So this places a junior developer at a very strong 24% above the national average for their first job out of a boot camp. Six years later, I now make multiple six figures and it took me about a year to a year and a half of being in the industry to make up over six figures for the first time. That was a lot. This video was a lot longer than I planned on it being, but I hope it's useful. Over the course of this video, we talked about everything you need to know to become a software engineer without a degree. We discussed some about the ins and outs of the self-taught route versus the bootcamp route. I also shared the three things that I wish I had known as a junior developer getting started in my career. Was there anything in there that surprised you or that you didn't know? Or do you feel differently about any of the things that I said? Did you have a different experience getting your first job or subsequent jobs? Drop me a comment if you wanna learn a little bit more about any of this or share what you learned from just this video. And finally, if you got something out of this, leave this video a like, drop me a comment letting me know what I did well. And above all, if you could just hit that subscribe button so that I can continue making informative, helpful content like this. And with that, until next time, folks.